Hi there. Now in this question, we've got to show that the equation 2 sine x equaling 4 cos x minus 1 all divided by tan x can be expressed in the form 6 cos squared x minus cos x minus 2 equals 0. And then we've got to go on and hence solve the equation, giving all the values of x between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. OK, well, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then. See how you got on. Well, for part one, let's just copy out the equation that we're given. That is 2 sine x equals 4 cos x minus 1, and that's all divided by tan x. Now, when I look at the equation that we have to prove, I notice that it hasn't got any fractions in. And we've got a fraction here. It's all divided by tan x. So I don't want to get rid of tan x first of all. So I'm going to multiply both sides by tan x. And that gives me 2 sine x tan x equals just the 4 cos x minus 1. OK. Next, I've got to head towards an equation with cos x in. And I know that tan x is the same as sin x over cos x. So if we write that in, we've got the 2 sin x here, and it's multiplied by sin x then divided by cos x. And this is equal to 4 cos x minus 1. Now again, we don't have any fractions in our equation, and I've got a fraction here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by cos x. And at the same time, this is just one term here. It's going to give us 2 sine squared x over cos x. Now, in place of sine squared x, we should know the identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x is identical to 1. And if we rearrange that, sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. So I can replace the top bit, 2 sine squared x, with 2 multiplied by 1 minus cos squared x. And then if I times both sides by cos x, we get cos x multiplied by the 4 cos x minus 1. Now, if I expand the bracket here, we end up with... 2 minus 2 cos squared x. And if I expand the bracket on the right here, we get 4 cos squared x minus cos x. And all I need to do now is just add 2 cos squared x to both sides and subtract 2. And what I get is 4 cos squared x plus another 2 cos squared x is 6 cos squared x. And then I've got minus cos x. And if I subtract the 2 from both sides, I've got minus 2. And it's going to equal 0. And that's what we had to show. OK? Now, move on to the next part, part 2. And in part 2, we've got to solve this equation. And to do that, we've seen that this equation can be written in this form here. So we've got already got it in the form of one trigonometric function, which is basically what you'd need to generally do for most trig equations. And so what we can do now is factorise this. This is a quadratic equation in cos x. And if we factorise this, we therefore have two brackets, and in these two brackets, we're going to have 3 cos x multiplied by 2 cos x. That's going to give me 6 cos squared x. And then for the minus 2, I'm going to put a minus 2 here and a plus 1 here. So that we'll get minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. But at the same time, we're going to get 3 cos x minus 4 cos x which is going to come to minus cos x. 
So that's the left hand side factorized and it equals zero. And that means that we can now put each of these factors equal to zero. So if three cos x minus two equals zero, then rearranging that by adding two to both sides and dividing by three gives us that therefore cos x will equal two thirds. And if we do the same for this, put two cos x plus one equal to zero, rearrange that, we'll have another solution which is cos x equals minus one half. So to solve this one, if we take the inverse cos of both sides, x would equal the inverse cosine then of two thirds. Or if we take this one, x would equal the inverse cos of minus a half. Okay, well let's just work with each of these separately. Okay, now if we take this one here, x equals the inverse cos of two thirds. What I'm going to do is draw a quadrant diagram. I'm assuming that you're familiar with quadrant diagrams. If not, you can always check them out on my website. Okay, so we've got our quadrant diagram starting from zero degrees here. This would be 90, 180, 270 and back to 360 degrees. So where is cosine of an angle a positive value? Well, it's always in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So you draw two lines equally inclined then to this horizontal line here and mark in that those two angles are exactly the same. And then starting from zero degrees, turning round in an anti-clockwise sense, we turn to the first line and this is going to be a possible value for x. Then we've got a second value Starting from here again, we can turn all the way around to the second line, okay? And that would be another possible value for x in the range 0 to 360 degrees. So when you take the inverse cos of two thirds on your calculator, make sure it's in degrees mode, okay? You end up with x equaling 48.189 and so on. So that means that that one in there, that angle marked bl with blue, is going to be 48.189 degrees. That corresponds to the red X then. So that's one solution. The other solution, since these two angles are exactly the same marked in blue, will be 360 degrees minus the 48.189 degrees. And so what that gives us is a second solution, which is 311.81 and so on degrees. Okay, so that's those two solutions in the range 0 to 360 degrees. And if we go on to solve for this one, again, drawing a quadrant diagram. Okay, we've got our 0 degrees there. Then with this one, cos x is negative and cosine is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So draw two lines equally inclined to this horizontal and mark those two angles in as being exactly the same. Starting from the zero here, we turn in an anti-clockwise sense to the first line. So that's a possible answer. We'll call that X then. As for the next one, starting from here again, turning right the way round to the next line here, that too is a possible value for x. So when you use your calculator this time, inverse cos of minus a half, you should find you get exactly 120 degrees. So that corresponds to the red x there. That means that we're left here with 60 degrees to make up that 180 degrees. So we've now just got to go 60 degrees beyond 180 degrees and that's going to be 240 degrees. Or alternatively, because of the symmetry of this diagram, this angle round here is going to be 120. And you could take that away from the 360 degrees and you would get 240 degrees. Now if we just summarize by putting all the angles in ascending order, 
Then for the first one, giving this one to three significant figures, that's going to be 48.2 degrees to 3SF. Then we've got two exact ones with 120 and 240 degrees. So 120, 240 degrees. And then we've got this last one here to three significant figures. Well, that's going to be 312 degrees. And we'll just put 3SF there. OK, so I hope that's been able to give you an idea how to do that if it caused any problems.